Welcome back, boys and girls, to The Real Christmas Story. We've been having so much fun learning about the real Christmas story, the one from the Bible. Mr. Eddie brought us some messages. Miss Manny's talked to us, too. We've learned about an angel. We've learned about Joseph and Mary and the shepherds. And today, we're going to put the whole story together. I'm Miss Tammy, and I'm so glad you're here. And if you're new today, we want to know it. We welcome you, and we want to encourage you to text us and let us know that you're with us today. Text this number that you see on your screen, give us your name, and we'll start sending you weekly mailers with prizes and color sheets. And we just are so glad you're here. So we hope that you'll do that. Now, I have kind of a surprise for you. Well, it's a new song, but before that, I got a surprise today, and it's over there. I saw that I get a Christmas present and a Christmas letter. Boys and girls, I'm so excited about that, and I'm excited you're here with me to see what I got. But before it's all about me, let's sing a song about Jesus. Everybody get ready. We're gonna sing a song called Glorious Day. Glorious, that's a big word. Do you know what that means? Well, glorious means amazing, stupendous. It's like, wow, one of the coolest things we've ever imagined. Can you say glorious with me? I didn't hear you. Glorious. When we sing our song and it comes to that word, I want you to all raise your hands and say glorious day because it is a glorious day we're celebrating. It's the birth of Jesus. Everybody stand up, let's sing together. Shepherds came to see the baby Stood by his mother's side Here lay the Savior inside a manger Oh, what a glorious night Oh, what a glorious night I hear the angels sing
stars shining in the sky. Below in Bethlehem, the king is sleeping. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! Welcome back, boys and girls. You did a great job singing that song. It's one of my favorite songs, and it's my even more favorite because I know you're singing it with me. Well, boys and girls, I think it's time that we talk to God. Will you put your hands together and let's pray? God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the boys and girls that are watching. And thank you for this season where we celebrate you, Jesus, you coming to earth for us. We love you and we thank you. And whether our hands are folded or we're walking down the street or we're laying in our bed, we can talk to you anytime. That's how much you love us. And we're thankful for that. And we love you too, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, let's open our letter and see what's in here. I love Christmas letters. How many of you have gotten a Christmas letter or a Christmas card so far? Isn't that fun to know people are thinking of you? Well, let's see what's in this one. If you remember from the first one, Miss Tammy is a thrower. Let's see what it says. Dear Tammy, was Jesus really born on December 25th? Well, that's a very good question. Thank you, whoever gave this to me. Was Jesus really born on December 25th? Well, boys and girls, if we want to know the answer, to the real Christmas story, we've got to look in our Bibles. And if you have your Bibles, why don't you get them? Because you could read for yourself in Matthew chapter 1 and 2 and in Luke chapter 1 and 2, both in the New Testament. Both give the story of Jesus' birth. And guess what? It doesn't say he was born on December 25th. It doesn't say he was born in December at all. What it does say, what the real Christmas story says, is that he came and he was born and it was amazing. And what I'd like to do right now, boys and girls, is focus on our video and see what the real Christmas story all brought together means. Let's watch it together. God's story, Jesus is born. So part of God's story is about how he sent his son, Jesus, to be born. And it goes like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He also created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. All they had to do was trust God. Then they would live with him forever in a perfect world where nothing bad happened, ever. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve stopped trusting God, so they disobeyed him. That's when all the wrong things in the world began. The worst part was they were separated from God because God is perfect and can't be around anything wrong. But God came up with a plan to rescue us from all the wrong things in the world. That way, he could be close to us again. For hundreds of years, God planned this rescue. He built a special family for the rescuer to be born into. He told prophets how to recognize the rescuer when he came. Prophets hear from God and then share it. God's family was so excited. And finally, it was time. God was ready to send his very own son, Jesus, to be with us on earth. Of course, he could have sent Jesus as a warrior or a superhero, but he didn't. He sent him the same way we all get here, as a baby. Now, that might not sound strange at first, but to a young woman named Mary, it was a huge surprise. God actually sent an angel to tell her that she was going to have a baby named Jesus. Mary was terrified, but she said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Basically, Mary wanted what God wanted. Anyway, the news about Mary's baby also came as a big surprise to a man named Joseph. Mary was going to be his wife, and now she was going to have a baby. But Joseph wasn't the father. So an angel came to him in a dream. He said, Don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. After hearing that, Joseph obeyed. A bit later, the king told people to go to their hometown to be counted. That was something that happened every once in a while. 
Joseph was from a little town called Bethlehem, so that's where he and Mary went. When they got there, Mary and Joseph couldn't find a place to stay. With nowhere else to go, they spent the night in a place where animals were kept. And that very night, Jesus was born. Mary laid him in a manger, which is where animals eat. Here was the King of Heaven, the perfect rescuer, born with animals and sleeping in a dirty feeding dish because nobody would make room for him. Kids, have you ever felt like nobody wanted you around? Well, that quiet, lonely moment was the moment God's whole family had been waiting for. So God did something special. He sent angels to some shepherds who were taking care of their sheep nearby. The angel said, Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds went to find Jesus right away. They told others the news. The rescuer is here and he is sleeping in a manger. Everybody who heard their story was amazed. This is what they had been waiting for. It just happened in a way that wasn't expected. Even though people had stopped trusting God, he loved them and us. He wants to be with us so much that he sent his very own son to earth to live as a man. In fact, one of the names God called Jesus was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Through this tiny baby, God was close to his people again. And that's the story of when Jesus was born. But here's a quick version of what happened after Jesus was born. A star appeared in the sky. Magi followed it and worshiped Jesus. Jesus grew up. He never did anything wrong. He showed us what it looks like to follow God and love like God. Then he took the punishment for everything we've done wrong. Now we can all be close to God again. And that's a part of God's story. So you see, boys and girls, the story of Jesus is starting at the very beginning. The real story of Christmas began years and years and years ago in the first book of the Bible called Genesis. When creation was formed and the first man and women chose their own way, Adam and Eve chose to do their own thing, just like we do sometimes, boys and girls. But God knew all along he was going to send a rescuer. He himself was coming down as a baby, Jesus to forgive our sins, to forgive the things we do wrong. And he could have come, just like the video said, as a superhero or a king, but he chose to come as a baby and to grow up just like we do so that we could really trust him and know that he understands what it's like to be us, to try so hard. The thing is, he never did anything wrong. We do, but he knows what it was like to be human. He knows what it's like to struggle. And boys and girls, sometimes that's what we do, even at Christmas time, right? Sometimes mostly at Christmas, that's when that greedy bug can come out. The selfish bug that says, what did I get? What can I get? Well, the real story of Christmas isn't about what we get, or what we get physically, it's what we get in our hearts. And yet, boys and girls, just like you, I can't wait to open this present. There's something maybe in here that's going to make me so happy. Let's open it, shall we? Oh yeah, if you remember, I'm a ripper. Let's see, I can't wait. Oh, it feels very, let's see. What? It's empty. Well, that could, be really sad or it could be something really good. It's up to me to choose, right? And I'm going to choose to think this is really good because you know what? This empty box reminds me of sometimes it's not about what we get. It's about what we remember. Sometimes boys and girls, I know for some of you out there, I'm thinking of Tommy and and Hayden and Gray. Sometimes the people we love the most, our moms and dads, they work far away and they, maybe they can't be with us for Christmas. But we have our memories. We have our memories of Christmases long ago. Perhaps somebody in your 
life died this year or are very sick and you can't be with them. But you have memories. You may not have something physically, but you can remember how much you love them. Maybe it was one of your animals. Oh, but what this reminds me of the most is Jesus. We can't hold him physically. We can't touch him or see him, but he's real and he's here. And this empty box reminds me that the best gift of all is something we can't touch and we can't hold. And it's him. It's Jesus. He promises us that he will be with us forever. And we know he gave us a beautiful gift, this Bible. That even though there's times we can't see and we can't feel, we can read about God and his plan for us. And we can read about Jesus and we can see the mountains and the snow. We can see all the trees. We can see people. And we can know he created all of these gifts for us. But boys and girls, there's one super special gift we need to talk about. And that's the gift of forgiveness for the things we do wrong. And the gift that Jesus wants to give us that says we can live with him forever. Nobody can ever take that gift away. If this box were full of things, somebody could steal it. Maybe it would get ruined or broken. The gift Jesus offers us can never be broken. It's in the Bible, and I want to read that verse to you now. It's in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Boys and girls, he gave his one and only Son. Gave, it's a gift. But you know what? We have to receive a gift. And that's what we can do today. For those of you who have never understood that Jesus is absolutely a gift, that God sent him and gave him to us so that we can know without a doubt we're forgiven and we have a promise of life ever, ever, and forever with him. All we have to do is receive that. And we can do that right now, boys and girls. You could pray a prayer with me. You could pray this now. You could pray it later tonight. It doesn't matter when or where. What matters is that you understand Jesus came for you. He was born for you. He lived and died on that cross, just like the video said, and rose again for you. Two very special times of the year we as Christians and Christ followers get to celebrate Christmas and Easter. Let's pray together. You can pray with me now if you want to receive Jesus' free gift. Jesus, thank you that you came as a baby. You came and lived a perfect life. You loved the people that were here on the earth. You were so forgiving, so kind. Jesus, I know I need your forgiveness. I know I do things that are wrong. Will you please forgive me? I believe you came. I believe you lived and died and rose again for me. And I receive you into my life as my leader and my forever friend. I believe you'll never leave me. I believe you'll help the Bible to become so real to me. Jesus, thank you for your spirit that will live inside of me. I receive your gift now. In your name, amen. Boys and girls, that's a powerful prayer because that prayer is heard in heaven. It's heard by Jesus and you receive the spirit to live inside of you. What a perfect Christmas gift. And boys and girls, if you did pray that prayer today and you do believe that Jesus is your forever leader and best friend and rescuer, will you text the number on the screen right now and let us know that you took the gift today. You received the gift of Jesus. We want to celebrate with you and we want to send you something in the mail. So text the number on the screen. You received Jesus as a gift and we'll be in touch with you. 
I wish you and Mr. Eddie and Miss Manny wish you the very merriest of Christmases. And remember, it's really all about the real Christmas story. See what you can give away to others this year. Maybe it's the truth about Jesus. We love you and we'll see you next week. Bye. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And wonders of his love And wonders of his love